Hey guys, it's Lucy and today I'm doing a Q&A but with a bit of a difference. <laughs> But if you've been to my channel before, hello you, come on in, you know what to do. And if you're new to my channel, a quick introduction. I'm Lucy, I've been on a running and weight loss journey since February 2020. I looked all over the internet to try and find someone who had started where I was in the beginning, which was 230 pounds, I couldn't run for more than 30 seconds, and I struggled with the belief that I could actually become a runner. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the person who started where I had and got themselves in the position that I wanted to be at which was running marathons well since february 2020 i've run a lot of miles and i've lost a lot of weight so i've decided to make the content that i was looking for way back then and become the youtuber that gives people that need it the hope and belief in themselves that they can do it so if this is the kind of thing that you think you need hit the subscribe button come on in there's plenty of run with me's let's get our trainers on and we can do this together but for today i'm actually going to put you down now but for today i have decided that i'm going to be answering some questions that i asked my subscribers for in a previous video today is going to be a q a video but i'm actually going to do it in a in the style of a vlog I hope that makes sense. I'm just getting ready to take my daughter out to football training. And uh, yeah, I'm just having a cup of tea and I'm gonna answer the first question now. First question, do you watch any of the other running YouTubers in brackets? I watch quite a few. <laughs> this is a really good one actually. I go in and out of subject. Currently, I'm not really watching any other running YouTubers. So, I have to think back and when I was preparing for Manchester Marathon, the one runner that sticks out to me that I watched quite a lot and really motivated me was the Welsh runner. The pace that he runs at is phenomenal. He's a very, very fast runner. The way he spoke, his mindset, everything he said, it was quite motivational and it, it, it encouraged me. Yeah, it was, it was really, really good to watch him. Even though he wasn't relatable to me whatsoever in regards to how fast he was running and everything else, <laughs> he still was a really good watch. I really did enjoy watching him. And his wife also um, has a YouTube channel and she's very good as well. I enjoyed watching her as well. And speaking of other YouTubers, someone that I've been watching on and off for years actually, is April Lauren. And I actually had the opportunity to sit down on a Zoom call with her recently. She reached out and asked me to film a podcast episode with her so we could sit down and talk all about our running and a little bit of weight loss. And yeah, it was so lovely to get the opportunity to chat with her and yeah, meet her, even, if, even though it was over Zoom, because we live quite far away from each other. <laughs> so April Lauren, um, yeah, I mean, if you already watch her, um, then you'll know that she's going through a, a weight loss journey and she's also on the road to a half marathon, which is incredible. I had a lot of fun sitting down and chatting with her. So April Lauren, and also another YouTuber who I have met in person, and we filmed my first ever collab video, is John Rochford. In terms of running content, he is on the road to running his first marathon, I believe it's his first marathon, in April this year, and he's doing some daily vlogs. Now his vlogs are insane, they're very, very good. His editing and his style of content is really good, I really enjoy it. And also, he is the one of the most genuine, awesome, nice people I've ever met. <laughs> when we filmed together on that day, we were laughing all day. I really, really did enjoy his company and I wouldn't mention him if I didn't think he was a, um, an awesome person. So yeah, check out his daily vlogs. He's doing some short style videos currently and they, they're brilliant, they're brilliant. Lots of running in there. <laughs> but other than that, I don't tend to watch much YouTube, which is a bit crazy really, isn't it? Because I make content on YouTube. <laughs> You'd think I would watch it all the time, but I, I just, I dip in and out. <laughs> right, on the way back from football now, Chloe loved it. She's got her dirty trainers on now, messing up my car. <laughs> bless her but she did really well we're on our way back home now yesterday i managed to go out and get a nice run done as you guys may know if you've been watching previously i'm coming back from recovery i'm slowly easing back into my runs and i managed to do a longer run yesterday really happy with how it went and yeah i ended up finishing off at uh, the 10k mark the plan really was to run quite long it was like time on feet I wanted to focus on but I also need to remember that I am in recovery hold on I just got across the road okay we're good I've got to remember I am in recovery so I'm a bit anxious about pushing it and getting that pain back in my leg but as I was running today no pain 
felt good felt strong wanted to spend like an hour and a half two hours on feet but do you know what is that too much to ask that was what i was asking myself so i think i did want at least six miles and at least an hour and that that's what i've done so this is a win i feel good but yeah that's my run today head over to my instagram at lucy shaw vlogs i upload every single run i do on the day i do it so if you want to check that out that's where i am Okay, it's lunchtime now. I'm gonna start with a bowl of soup. It's the same soup that I had in my what I eat in a day. If I can find the video, I'll link it. Question two, which hydration vest would you recommend for a first time half marathoner to try? When I did my first half marathon, I just literally took the one that my husband uses, which is just um, a cheap one off Amazon. It, I didn't use it for any specific reason other than it can hold my drinks <laughs> and it can hold gels. Anything that you have that you're comfortable running in and can hold whatever you need for your half marathon, because all of us, we all need different things depending on how comfortable we are with that distance. For example, back then I needed, I think I needed water and gels. And now for me personally, in the position I'm in to run a half marathon, I would probably just need a little bit of water. I I would be fine just to go out with a, with a drink. So it all depends on what you need. You need a vest with loads of different things. If you like to have a certain snack, certain foods, a morale boost, you need different kinds of types of drink, you need several bottles, get whatever's comfortable to wear and that will fit whatever you need. And just in case you're wondering, this is the brand that I used originally for my first half marathon. This is the vest. And now I've moved into longer distance running. This is the brand that I use. This is the red vest that you'll see me in all the time. It's the most comfortable one that I've run in. Well, compared to the other one, I've only run in two. <laughs> so guys, it's actually the next day. <laughs> my day ended up getting really manic yesterday. So um, I'm finishing off the Q&A uh, today. I'm currently wrapping up some birthday presents for my daughter. It's her birthday soon. So just gonna do that while I answer your questions. <laughs> I have them written down and I'm just gonna go ahead and answer question number three. Finding your mojo again after a break. So finding my mojo, I think if there's been a time where I've had a break from running, normally for me personally, it would be due to circumstance or injury. Previously, I remember I had exams to sit and for the duration I had, I had a year's course that I crammed into about three or four months. So I remember for that period of time, my running had to be sacrificed for the sake of my studies. It was a bit of a relief for me to have the time once the exams were done and to have the time to get back and run again. I never really lost my mojo. I have also been injured and had to have long periods of time off. And again, I haven't really lost my mojo because I love what I've been able to achieve. I've, I've gone from looking at what my body looks like and I've turned it into watching what my body is achieving but there are occasions where i have lost my mojo so it might not necessarily be after a break it might be just during a training plan or like a training session and in those times i remind myself that i have never ever ever regretted a workout i've either been super happy that i've got something done or i'm just super happy that it's done like it's over <laughs> and I've, I've finished this workout that i just didn't enjoy by the end of every single workout it is always a positive there is never a negative unless i'm injured then that's a negative but that very rarely happens i also have um another question that is kind of similar actually which is how do you motivate yourself to get out and run when the mind says nope not today do you have any little wins to push yourself on a meh day Okay, so on a meh day, I totally understand what that means and hopefully you do too. <laughs> you probably do. I definitely have little wins. I focus on those little wins every single time. So on a day that I'm not really feeling it, I will get my workout gear on. Probably wouldn't have planned a route or a distance knowing me. <laughs> probably just the fact that I just need to get out. If I think about it too much, I'm just not gonna do it. So I'll just get my workout clothes on, get myself outside and 
get the workout started on my watch, get my legs going. And once I'm going, I celebrate every single little bit. The fact that I've got myself out there and I am running, that's a win and I'm happy and I'm celebrating. I get to mile one, that's a win. I'm happy, I'm celebrating. Hopefully I would have made up my mind about how far I'm running at that point. That's a win. Then every single mile from then on is a win. Don't wait until the very end of your workout to celebrate that you've done it. Celebrate every single, every single moment. And if that means you have to celebrate every single step that you've taken, then do that. <laughs> okay, next question. Achy joints when beginning running while carrying extra weight. Okay, so in the very beginning of my journey, I used to ache, I used to have pains, it was very uncomfortable. But you know what? The best piece of advice I can give you is to make sure you warm up to make sure you stretch. And during your workout, if you are feeling achy and you are hurting, you can pause the workout, stop, stretch, and go again as many times as you need. Trust me, there is nothing wrong with stopping and stretching to get yourself back in a comfortable place so then carry on the workout. Because if you carry on and you're not comfortable, you could end up really hurting yourself. You could also end up really putting yourself off of running. So when it comes to being overweight and carrying that extra weight, you will have to stop and stretch. You will have some aches and some pains and it will feel really, really difficult. Well, it did for me. Just know that you can improve and you will improve. It doesn't matter if you're walking more than you are running as long as you are moving and getting your body used to it. If you just keep consistent and you don't let the aches and pains become an excuse not to do it, then you will succeed every single time. Just take care of yourself and believe in yourself. Next question. What do you take with you on your long runs for energy and hydration? My long runs, if I am doing a long run where I'm gonna need energy and hydration, the best thing, and I've spoke about it in other in previous videos, the best thing I use and that helps me is Tailwind. I used to use gels quite often and ever since I've tried Tailwind and I've used it since on my long runs, I'm now convinced that the gels are just a placebo for me because I genuinely feel better with Tailwind. It really does give me that boost. I also like to have a bit of a morale boost as well, which is normally an orange Lucasade or a version of orange Lucasade. I usually get the, like a, a cheap supermarket brand one now because to be honest, I can't really tell much of the difference <laughs> taste wise. And I don't tend to eat very much on a long run. What I have done in the past and what really did help actually is ready salted crisps. If you're going to go for a really super long run and you don't like eating on the move, what I've done before is I've crushed them all up in the packet, <laughs> just poured, chewed, got it down as quick as possible and it really does make a difference. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other questions that you want me to answer. I know that there is quite a few questions that I haven't managed to get into this video. I don't want it to be crazy long. But give this video a thumbs up and put it in the comments below if you want me to do another Q&A because I've got some more questions that need answering. If you are on a running and weight loss journey, I believe in you. You need to believe in you. You can do this. Hit that subscribe so we can struggle together. And guys, I will see you soon for some more updates. Bye guys!